Over the past few years, the popularity of e-bikes has surged. While once a rarity, you can now find motored models everywhere from college campuses to office parks to mountain biking trails. This bike behind me is the new Medicu Cybertrack 300. It's a 27.5 inch e-mountain bike designed for riders between 5'7 and 6'5. Right now, you can buy this bike on Medicu's website for $899. I'm Matt from the Make Use Of product reviews team, and in this video, we're going to find out whether this e-bike deserves to be crowned king of the mountain. So first up is features. Now we're going to break this up a little because I want to show you both the bike features and the e-bike features. Primarily because if you're considering this bike, I want you to know what you're getting into as comprehensively as possible. So for the bike itself, the Medicu Cybertrack 300 is a 27.5 inch, all aluminum, 21 speed hardtail unit with Shimano gears, adjustable front suspension, and front and rear disc brakes. The recommended rider height for a unit like this is between five foot seven and six foot five. Though I'm five foot four, and I was able to ride this bike with the seat positioned at the lowest point. That said, I still had to lean the bike significantly so I could get a foot on the ground at stoplights. Maximum weight rating is 308 pounds or about 139 kilograms. The shifters on the bike are the popular Shimano Tourney SL TX30s. And these shifters control Shimano Torni TZ front and rear derailleurs. Weight on this bike is just a hair under 51 pounds or about 23 kilograms. The whole package rolls on a set of 27.5 by 2.1 rotational compass tires, which are rated for 40 to 60 PSI, depending on how soft you want your ride to be. On the left rear of the Cybertrack 300, there's an adjustable kickstand. As for the electric components, this is primarily a pedal assisted style e-bike with a max top speed of 20 miles per hour. Powering the bike is a 48 volt, 500 watt Vinca RH75-H500 motor that allows for 50 nanometers of torque and 750 peak watts. Like a lot of e-bikes, this one uses a sensor to measure your speed. So do with that information what you like. Charging the 499.2 watt hour battery takes only around three hours from flat to full. With a full battery, you can expect 30 to 40 miles when you're using the pedal assisted mode uh, and a max of 30 if you're cranking the throttle in pure electric mode. The battery on this one also locks onto the frame for safety and you've got a small rotating dust cover that keeps the charger port from getting debris inside. Um, and it helps hold the charger in place when you've got the bike plugged in. The Vinca LCD display on the unit allows you to adjust speed when you're using the throttle so you can dial in your ride at the speed that you prefer. Now there are five levels here with one being the lowest and five being the 20 mile per hour maximum. The display also lets you see battery level, motor power, speed mode, and total mileage. For those of us who aren't used to converting kilometers per hour into miles per hour, you will be happy to know that the Cybertrack 300 uses miles per hour as its standard unit of measurement. All these features make for an e-bike that is a lot of fun to ride and one that has enough power to help you push through some of the steeper climbs with enough juice to enjoy bombing downhill. Let's talk briefly about unboxing and setup. Now, the Cybertrack 300 arrives in a large box that for some reason FedEx left just chilling outside my garage. Cutting open this box revealed the bike frame with the rear wheel already attached. Then there was the front wheel, the saddle, pedals, a quick release axle, a single disc brake, two reflectors, the battery, a charger, the rear derailleur protecting rack, and all of the associated hardware and tools. Additionally, the manual and a greeting card were stuffed into the package. The card contained a QR code that you could use to link to an instructional video for putting the bike together. Now I'll admit, I didn't watch the video, mostly because I'm a knucklehead, <laughs> but 
but I wish that I would have, as it might have saved me about 15 minutes uh, of removing the front disc after I had installed it backwards like a dummy. The rundown on setting this unit up was pretty simple. Uh, you install the handlebars first by loosening the hex bolts on the rear of the stem, then you spin it around until it matches up with the frame, uh, then you unscrew the bolts for the stem cover, insert the bars, and tighten everything down. Next, you'll need to install the front brake rotor. Uh, there is an arrow on the disc itself that needs to point in the direction of the wheel's rotation, so make sure you don't mess that up like I did. Then, you insert the axle into the front wheel and smack that baby onto the front fork. Just make sure the wheel is nice and tight inside the dropouts, as this tension is the only thing keeping the front wheel attached to the frame. Install the derailleur protector, the pedals, the saddle, the battery and the reflectors, and then you're all set with assembly. Finally, you'll need to adjust the seat height and the depth to your preferred position. So the two things I noticed first about riding this e-bike were the extremely peppy pedal assist and the pillowy soft front suspension. While I will admit my first ride wasn't through the underbrush, I do live in an area with rampant potholes and generally uneven streets. But on the back of this bike, cruising around the neighborhood was actually extremely enjoyable. Even at the lowest speed setting, pedal assist had me flying down the road at 20 miles per hour, which feels pretty fast when you're on an e-bike. The suspension here stands out. Normally the construction zones that are scattered around my city kind of give me the heebie-jeebies when I'm riding my fixed gear. Not so with the Cybertrack 300. This bike was sturdy and stable, and I found myself craving more treacherous terrain. I do want to highlight that the heavy weight of the bike did make it a bit less responsive than my steel frame daily driver. I would say it's a lot like the difference between driving a comfortable luxury vehicle and driving a stiff sports car. Additionally, I made a few adjustments to the positioning of the cockpit controls to suit my preferences. I also added a spur cycle bell, a kryptonite lock, uh, and a couple of lights just for a little added safety and security. For the next two weeks, I used this bike exclusively on my 16 mile twice a week commute. Now I know that's not the intended purpose here, but I wanted to make sure I spent some significant time in the saddle, and I also wanted to put this bike through some extreme riding. So aside from a single flat tire, I had no problems. In fact, I could see this bike slowly becoming my daily commuter. It's fast, it's fun, and the knobby tires are excellent for the different types of terrain that I encounter on my normal daily rides. Of course, not everyone is gonna want the Cybertrack 300 for this type of riding. So let's talk about how it performs on the trail. Early one Saturday morning, I took the bike out to the Blue Hills Reservation in Eastern Massachusetts just to see how it would handle the rocky terrain of significant off-road use. Now I will admit, as a mountain biker, I'm not extremely experienced. So I stayed off of the more advanced trails in favor of a less intense ride. With my GoPro firmly mounted on my chest, I tried to see how much the Cybertrack 300 could take before it started feeling squirrely. Now I'm gonna be honest here, I don't think that this bike is the best choice for hardcore trail riding. It's excellent for lighter terrain, but at higher speeds on rocky paths, the steering and the weight start to become a bit concerning. Additionally, the lack of rear suspension means that you're gonna feel every single bump and jump. While this might not be concerning for some, I think for me there were several instances where I was worried that I was gonna dent a rim when the rear wheel hit particularly large rocks. The good news here is that the electric components ensure you can climb hilly surfaces with significantly less effort than you would use uh, with a standard 21 speed mountain bike. Granted, you're not gonna be able to fly up hills, but the motor does make climbing much easier. Unfortunately, like I said, I don't think this bike is gonna be the best for your hardcore mountain bikers. The heavy weight of it puts it on the higher end of the spectrum for trail bikes, and it isn't as nimble in rocky ruts or technical terrain as something without a motor. On the other hand, for sightseeing trips, family outings, and easy trails, the Cybertrack 300 does great. And as an all-purpose commuter, it's also pretty awesome. So let's talk battery life and range here. 
In the owner's manual of this unit, there's a warning that you shouldn't charge the battery for more than about three hours. Doing so can, of course, shorten the life of the battery. Now, despite my best intentions, there were a few times that I went past that time limit by a few hours. The only reason I mention this is because most people are just gonna plug this unit in and just leave it, whether it's overnight or during the day. Medicu doesn't recommend this. And with a large lithium battery, you really should be wary of overcharging. Something I did find is that after my 16 mile round trip commute, the battery was depleted by over half. So that makes me question Medicu's 30 mile range claims. The company states that this maximum range of 30 miles was achieved by a 165 pound individual at 16 miles per hour with no wind. I'm slightly heavier than that, if you couldn't tell, especially with my loaded messenger bag. And plus on my normal route, there are other environmental conditions. Based on my experience, I gather max range could be anywhere between 20 to 25 miles for a person like me who is around 180 pounds. So can you repair the Cybertrack 300? Of course you can. Tires, wheels, brake pads, and the chain, all those things are serviceable by both amateur bike mechanics and knowledgeable wrench turners. The warranty on this bike is one year on hardware, frame, and battery. And components like brake pads and tires aren't covered here, but that's not surprising given their wearable nature. So what do we love about this e-bike? In my experience, the best parts about the Cybertrack 300 are gonna be the smooth ride and the long range. I love the front suspension, though I do wish rear suspension was an option. I'm also impressed by how quickly this bike can get up to speed with just the throttle alone. The five electric speed settings make cruising effortless, and the 21 speed transmission will satisfy purists who think that motors are only for climbing hills. The bike is also nicely styled, and it's gonna fit all genders as long as they meet the height requirement. Even for shorties like myself though, this bike isn't a bad pick, um, but there are probably more suitable options available. City riding and trail riding are also a lot of fun. Additionally, I'd imagine if you wanted to tow a small trailer with this bike, it wouldn't be a problem. The gearing and the derailleurs were properly dialed in from the factory, and assembly was not difficult. I think all of these positives really make the Cybertrack 300 a formidable budget e-bike pick. So what is not to love? First is going to be the noise. Now the motor of this bike emits a slight whine when it's engaged. It's not terrible, but you can hear the motor spinning up in some of my video clips. The brakes are also fairly noisy. Now I'm not sure if that was specific to my bike or if that's across the board, but even after working them in over about 70 miles, I still haven't gotten rid of the sharp squeak in either set. For a new bike, a little noise is expected, but after that many miles, I would really think that the brakes would be a little bit less harsh on the ears. I'm also not a fan of the telescoping kickstand. The reason for that is there was no indication that this kickstand was adjustable in the user's manual. So even after tightening and adjusting the stand, after I figured it out, um, I almost dropped the bike at one point due to the stand pushing inward slightly. Finally, you have to adjust this kickstand with a hex head wrench, uh, which means that if it slides inward on you, you won't be able to adjust it unless you have your toolkit with you. This doesn't really seem like a problem until you realize that this bike weighs over 50 pounds and it has several delicate electronic components attached to it. That means dropping the Cybertrack 300 isn't really the best idea. Which brings me to my last point, weight. So the weight of this unit is gonna be a problem for some. It's not bad when you're riding, but it is a pain to haul into and out of a vehicle. It's also not the easiest bike to carry over non-bike friendly sections of the trail. So should you buy the Cybertrack 300? For beginner to intermediate riders, the Cybertrack 300 works great. It's ideal for those who may not have the endurance to pedal for long periods of time, but who still wanna enjoy mountain biking in some capacity. Though I do think more experienced riders may find the bike lacks extreme hill bombing capabilities. Surprisingly though, the Cybertrack 300 is fantastic for urban commuting. In fact, I think I would recommend it most for folks looking for an alternative to the smaller foldable e-bikes that seem to be populating the market. While that may seem like a bit of an odd statement, 
The additional front suspension and the large tires make for a ridiculously comfortable ride. Gravel, construction zones, um, and even wet grass are no match for this e-mountain bike. Plus, if you add a set of lights, you can get even more utility out of it. So if you're in the market for a bike that can handle light duty trail work, or if you want something to help you increase your confidence on your daily commute, then this e-bike is sure to surprise you. So what do you think of the Cybertrack 300 by Medicu? Let me know down in the comments. Additionally, if you want to check out the full review with more detailed specs and added information, head on over to makeusub.com. Finally, if you found this video useful, go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, you know the deal. For Make Use Of, once again, my name's Matt, I appreciate you watching, and we will see you in the next one. It sound right, boy.